Good morning, and welcome to worship at Park Hill Christian Church on this All Saints Sunday. We're so glad you're worshiping with us and are especially happy to have any visitors who are joining us today. Pre-K 5 through 5th grade will gather for Sunday school. They're back, we'll be back to Sunday school with the kiddos November 28th the first Sunday of Advent. Please pray God's blessing on this gathering. It will be their first time in 20 months. And as you know, it's been far too long. Next week, our own Miles Cook will be giving us the message. And your prayers and support are greatly appreciated during this time of ministerial and transition. And that was my way of saying, please show up to hear him preach. <laughs> there is a baby shower for Alyssa Carson Anglin. That will be two Sundays from today, November 21st, from 2 to 3.30 in the South parking lot. So it's a, a drive-through. You roll down the window, throw out the gift, <laughs> wave. Maybe pick up a cookie and go on. It'll be fun. She is registered at Target and at Amazon, and it is a boy. The Disciples Women, please don't forget their goodies. They're being sold right now in the parlor. And please support that fundraiser. Proceeds to go, go to their many, many service projects. The Disciples Men will meet Tuesday, November 16th at 6 p.m. in Grace Hall. Tom Hanlon has a very important message he'll be sharing with the men. Uh, please RSVP with Robin by November 15th. As you know, they do cater in those meals and they like to know who to prepare for. The outreach ministry is accepting new and gently used items for the Christmas store now through December 5th. And if you have any questions at all, just contact Jenny Gregory. All right, our hymn of praise this morning is number 74. If you will, please stand and sing as we sing the first four verses of Our God, Our Help in Ages, in ages Past. Please stand. <laughs> people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. 
Our hymn of devotion this morning is number 312. We'll sing the first two, or I'm sorry, verses one and four of Softly and Tenderly, and then we'll sing verse one after our morning prayer. concerns and our praises and let's go to God in prayer precious Lord and present who have gone before us and lost our share mothers father sons charities and so much more our sorrow deep when we Lord you hold our heads and carry our Lord but it is mean and we will, you God, for the depth of your love and the light of your soul we honor today. They touched our lives. Each ran bravely, honorably, you set out for them. Lord, help us, these saints, through their love, charity, patience, sin, humor, hospitalized our lives, strengthened this church on earth. Lord, they have left a new saints to take their place, so their work will be blessed and continue. In son's name, who taught us to pray, who art in heaven, who would be thy name on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the path. to come to the table who have gone before us. Let us focus giving and praise for their presence and their influence. Let us remember by asking God the same joy that they carried in their all believers are welcome to the table. Our hymn of preparation is number 365. <laughs> So 
God of all grace, we come to this table having examined our souls, Lord. In receiving the bread and cup, symbol of Christ's body and blood, we know we must come before it in repentance and humility. Bless this bread and cup as we remember Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, which he did for the atonement of our sins. And we thank you so much for that, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. That night in the upper room, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, and said, My body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, at the end of the meal, he took the cup. And he said, this is the new covenant in my body and in my blood. As often as you drink it, do this. For as all claim his death until he comes again. Praise God from praise him.
I am so grateful that you are here today on this All Saints Day. I'm moved by not only my love for each of you, but the size of this crowd. I thank you. This, this is a blessing. Together, let us celebrate those who have gone before us this past year. Then, let's prepare our minds to accept our own identity as saints and open our hearts to the continued transformation God has planned for our lives. As I call each name, David Gregory will light a candle in celebration of a life well lived. This will be followed by Bob Choate, who will ring a bell in honor of each saint. These precious saints, we are told by scripture and God's own world, word that they are now our witnesses. And by keeping them close to our hearts, remembering their love in action, we will be encouraged to run better the race God has set before us. Also at this time, I encourage you to do as Reverend Bobby Holly asked us to do in his message last week. He asked us to bring to mind all of the saints who have touched our lives, past and present. Picture each one. Let us celebrate these saints for enriching our lives and for being the loving, faithful ambassadors of God that they were. Jack Kenneman, born May 12th, 1934, died November 19th, 2020. A devoted father, husband, successful businessman who loved God deeply. Don Johannes, born October 25th, 1955, died November 30th, 2020, a brave, honorable servant and loving family man defined by his love of God. Conley Jackson, Born February 13th, 1926, died January 7th, 2021. One of a kind, a strong believer who walked the walk and according to a dear friend, walked. Neela Hobby, November 12th, 1952, died January 11th, 2021 a minister and friend to all of us. Andy Matthews, born July 25th, 1975, died January 30th, 2021. Andy Boy lived with a determination and heart that far eclipsed his physical limitations. Myra Jo Little, born October 1st, 1926, died February 24th, 2021. When Myra's name is spoken, people smile. She was huge hearted with open, welcoming arms.
Sonia Bowling, born February 7th, 1939, died March 27th, 2021. Sonia lived as and loved Jesus like a child. She loved celebrating her birthdays and Christmas, but that never included Santa Claus, by the way. It was all about Jesus for Sonia. And she looked forward to seeing all of her family in heaven. Alice Olet, born November 8, 1917, died April 20th, 2021. A talented woman committed to her family, her faith, her church, and her needlecraft. Kenneth Fawcett, born April 5th, 1972, died May 14th, 2021, a ray of sunshine. He was funny as all get out, avid model car builder, and he always saw the brighter side of things. June Opp, born October 5th, 1924, died May 15th, 2021. Sweet and supportive of her husband, family, and always had a smile. And if you remember, she also always had a matching headband for every outfit. Billy Hampton, born July 7th, 1930, died June 3rd, 2021. Gentle, loyal, wonderful hostess, a woman of great faith, generous, patient, and kind. Debbie Roselle, born February 17th, 1955, died August 20th, 2021. Debbie was beyond giving, deeply involved in church life and community, a devoted wife, mother, and friend. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, continue to hold these dear souls close to your presence and bless their family members, friends, all of us as we remember and honor their lives today. It's in your precious name we pray this. Amen. Thank you, David. Thank you, Bob. Saints, according to Paul, you, me, all believers are saints right now, new believers and old. I don't know about you, but it is really hard for me to see myself as a saint. I am truthfully far from it. And not only that. But in my mind, I see the saints as I did as a child. Attending church on Air Force bases, as you would know the military would do, a multi-purpose building, all denominations shared the same sanctuary. So the Catholic service immediately followed our Protestant service. 
As an acolyte, I had the job of opening the small doors that ran the length of both walls of the sanctuary. Tucked behind each door in its own little alcove was a saint, and they would pop out every Sunday. These are the saints I remember. Believers so good, they are immortalized in stone. Thankfully, Paul explains our transformation from sinner to saint in his letter to the believers in the Greek city of Corinth. If you'd like to, it is 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21. I will be reading from the NRSV version, and I believe that's not what you've got. Beginning in 16. From now on, therefore... We regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, see? Everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling this world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat on you behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteous of God. We are saints. Again, in him we might become the righteous of God. We could never be good enough to be saints on our own. It takes a holy transformation to become a saint. And that transformation begins the moment we ask Jesus to be our Savior. From the moment we accept and place in our heart the knowledge that we can only be saved through Christ, we become saints. We are God's saints, not for who we are or anything we could ever do, but by his grace, his gift of salvation given to us through his willing son, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask you to say it with me. We're going to say we are saints. Are you ready? We are are saints. Let's say it again. We are saints. Wow. We're saints. And as saints, we are ambassadors for God. God is redeeming this broken world one person at a time, and he is equipping us to help. God equips us by giving us talents, giving us resources, giving us a hunger for his word, and for his presence. He equips us by even giving us an example, that example being his son, Jesus Christ. He gave us the knowledge through his Holy Spirit. Today, we honor the saints who have gone before us. Their race is finished. Their transformation is complete. We remember our saints each year because they connect us together. They inspire us by their examples of generosity, forgiveness, perseverance, and faith in times of difficulty. Their lives tell of God's faithfulness, God's love for us, and God's redemption. Our saints... Continue to speak to us 
Every time a neighbor does a good deed, it's like a whisper in our ear. Every time a friend listens with a trustworthy ear, a stranger's honest answer, a child's loving hug, all of these are the saints that lived before them and the saints that lived before them. Amazing. We come to God flawed. We're not just flawed, we are fragile. But we come just as we are. He uses our weaknesses, even our obsessions, and turns them to his good. Like the famous Renaissance sculptor Michelangelo, God sees our potential and work, and he works patiently to lovingly model us along the way. So you know you guys are fixing to get an art lesson, right? <laughs> Michelangelo, ring a bell. You may know his particular sculpture, it's called David. It stands 15 feet tall. It's carved from one ginormous piece of marble. David's right hand it's tucked to his thigh. It is holding the stone. His left arm is bent and draped across his elbow and sh or his shoulder and his hand is that sling. And he's kind of looking sideways, head up. Do I look like him? <laughs> Probably not. At five foot two. But in his stance and his expression, he is patiently waiting, patiently waiting for God to say, now. So he can hurl that stone, by, guided by God's hand, to take the giant Goliath by surprise and knock him down dead. That stone squarely in the middle of his eyes. This work of art by its very existence illustrates God's ability to transform a willing believer into a saint. At 26 years of age, Michelangelo accepted the commission to sculpt the figure of David for the Cathedral of Florence in 1501. This is your lesson. The marble chosen for the sculpture, as I said before, was ginormous. It had been laying for over 50 years in the quarry, rejected already by two sculptors who themselves tried to carve the image of David. Both very gifted sculptors, by the way, declared the massive stone unfit for use because the marble was brittle and it held a critically weak vein that could fail at any time. But Michelangelo stepped out in faith. According to Stephanie Story, author of the novel, or the novel Oil and Marble, Michelangelo prayed and fasted for weeks before beginning the work. He put his faith in God and he was rewarded. David is considered one of 10 of the greatest works ever created by man. Over one million people per year view the colossal statue of David when they visit Florence, Italy. And this work, as well as his sculpture of the Pietà, which means mother and child in Italian, another lesson, and the painting of the Sistine Chapel, these three works of art are among the top 10 greatest pieces ever created by man. They have inspired and moved countless souls to seek God. So, marble, twice rejected and deemed worthless, is now a masterpiece. This is how God transforms the broken. One faith-filled step at a time, removing the excess refining, burnishing, slowly God's image of our best selves emerges. Not for our glory, but for his. 
We are saints in the eyes of our Father, saints in the heart of our Savior, and saints in the hands of our Holy Spirit. Let us accept and embrace our identity as we remember the saints who have gone before us. Let us allow God to continue his work in our lives so we too can be transformed daily by the race he has set before us. We are saints. Let us bow our heads. Lord, by remembering the saints who have gone before us, when we reflect and remember the light of your Son that shines so brightly in the way they chose to live, we remember your mighty works. We remember all that you have done and that it is all for our redemption. And that our redemption begins the moment we accept your son Jesus as our savior. Thank you, Lord, for loving us so very, very much. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If there is anyone here today who feels called to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, to become a saint this very moment, please speak to me after the songs at the back of the church. Call me in, at the church office or on my cell phone. We are beginning a pastor's class November 17th. Uh, that will be by Zoom if you have grandchildren who are interested in doing that. Anybody here that would like to transfer their faith and be a loving member of this body of saints, we welcome you with our open arms. Again, you may see me after the song, behind uh, at the end of service or by phone. Our hymn of commitment uh, this morning is number 355. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5 of For All the Saints. Please stand as we sing together. your saints and give thanks for the amazing work you did in their lives. 
Lord, until our race is complete, keep your target of righteousness before us. Continue to cover us with your grace as we grow as saints, learning to live this life for your glory. Keep us and protect us until we meet again this next week. We ask this in your son's name. Amen.